JC was abducted from a bus stop. She was missing 18 years. I had done the age progression for her, and when she was found, that was a moment that justified why we're here and why I think I had the coolest job in the world. <laughs> My name is Joe Mullins. I'm a forensic imaging specialist with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. I am one of four full-time artists in the Forensic Services Unit. My day-to-day -day job entails doing age progressions of long-term missing children. One of the focuses that I've kind of latched onto is the forensic facial reconstructions from skeletal remains. I can't do my job without that combination of art and science. So it's forensic anthropology, fine art and graphic design all molded together to make a forensic imaging specialist with the National Center for Missing Exploited Children. In 2016, approximately 460,000 children were reported missing. The amazing impact of the work that has been done here with this organization has seen an over 97% recovery rate of children who go missing. And we have helped law enforcement identify more than 13,000 children who are depicted in child pornography images. My name is Jim Cole, and I'm a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations. I'm a section chief over victim identification at the HSI Cyber Crime Center. Over 200 million images and videos of child exploitation have been seized by law enforcement in the United States and submitted to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. If you kind of break down that 200 million and what is coming into the center weekly, that's on average uh, about 750,000 images and videos a week. We received a case in the lab that involved material depicting two really, really young children. One of those images depicted one of the victims with several items, and one of those items was a prescription bottle. There was a certain amount of lens blur in the image, making the data on the pill bottle difficult to read. At the time, I happened to be involved in a beta of a new filter that Adobe was creating for Photoshop, and as a result of that, we were able to glean the person whose prescription it was that led us to 13 different targets and apprehended that offender. We try to figure out how to expose Nick or Jim to technologies that are unreleased and try to figure out, could we apply that to getting a kid back? Each case that comes into the lab is really unique in and of itself. And so the variety of techniques that we use is everything from bringing up exposure or light to bringing up areas of shadow, sharpening, or use different tools to stabilize frames of video. When it comes to the technologies, when it comes to the tools, you never know how people will use the technology that you create. Whether it's the artistic world or whether it's the law enforcement world, it's fascinating to see somebody like Jim Cole at HSI apply technologies in ways that we don't necessarily anticipate to try and impact somebody's life in a positive way. There's an important marriage here between technology and the investigations that happen out in the field. I can tell you that without technology, thousands of children would probably go unidentified and unrescued. When you are involved in the rescue of a child, there is just no greater feeling. In 17 years, I have not been able to come up with some sound bite or snippet to express all the emotion that comes into when you find your know, missing child. I, I can't do it. It just gets everything just kind of pulls back and you get the emotion. That's, that's when everything comes back, like, this is serious work. This is, this is life or death. 